False teachers have the appearance of having some nourishment, the appearance of having some sustenance, but nothing ever falls from them. It leaves the ground below them dry and parched. The question is why. It's, we see something like this happening, and I'm sure your parishioners also ask you why. Indeed, they do. This is Wretched Radio, Tulsa, Oklahoma, bucolic town, rural center. Never anticipated they'd experience a mass shooting, but they did. People murdered inside of a building in cold blood, and the community is left reeling, confused, frightened, grieving, mourning, and curious. Why? Why do these things happen? To the credit of Channel 2, they decided to approach two of Tulsa's largest faith leaders to unearth the theological explanation for why evil exists. And what you're about to hear is a pretty big swing and a pretty big miss. The pastor, you might remember... (laughs) Pastor, I was going to say spit. (laughs) Expectorate? Is that the the, the fancy word for spitting? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. He expectorated into his hand and then smeared it all over somebody's face on the platform and the Sunday morning sermon. It might get nasty. And do you do you hear and see the responses of the people? To be clear, it's not that he doesn't say anything sort of biblical but wow what little hope this man actually had to share with a grieving community one of the things that we've understood is these type of things have no real explanation really no real explanation nothing we don't have an answer in genesis you know that old fall story the old man ushering in sin, nothing about the total depravity of the human heart because of the fall, no explanation whatsoever. Huh, that's the kookiest thing. The world we live in, there are so many wicked and evil things that happen that it seems like we have to endure. That's it. Grin and bear it. Just a lot of, lot of evil out there. So you're just going to you're just going to have to figure it out. Now, he does try to get biblical. And so okay, we recognize that, but oh, it doesn't go nearly far enough. One of the things that we know is that weeping may endure for a night, but we really believe that joy comes in the morning. Fair enough, that's a Bible verse. That is certainly a truism. The question is, how does joy come in the morning? It might not be tomorrow morning. It might not be next year morning. It might be an eternal morning when we awaken in heaven and experience eternal joy. Furthermore, where do we find our joy? If you're watching this, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, you're not going to hear anything about Jesus. You're not going to hear anything about forgiveness of sins. You're you're not going to hear any warnings to repent lest you likewise perish. You will hear nothing that is helpful for people. And this is an evangelical faith leader. And even as we stand here in the night after such a horrific tragedy, um, our community, this, this Tulsa community is going to do what I believe we do every time we're faced with tragedy. We're going to hold out for hope until the morning. And we believe something good is going to come from this horrible situation. Okie dokie. That apparently is an allusion to Romans chapter 8, that all things work together for good to those who are his. Uh, but does that make sense to anybody who's watching this? The, the, the question is, why does this stuff happen? And he had many avenues he could have taken. He could have gone to the garden to explain it. He could talk about the evil that is lurking in every person's heart. 
He could have pointed them toward eternal hope. Oh, there is a glorious place awaiting for those who are hidden in Christ. My message to the community, if you're not a Christian, you better get saved tonight because death is imminent for all of us. Please run to the Savior. And if you're a Christian, remember that your Savior, he wept at the death of a friend. He is a caring Savior. He is a good, sympathetic high priest. Be comforted. Grab your Bible. Read the Psalms. Find comfort. Don't look to peace to find your peace. Don't look for a community that never experiences anything tragic to find your satisfaction. You need to look to Jesus Christ. But we didn't hear Jesus' name mentioned even once in that presentation. One of the things that I really believe that we can do right now is meet people's tangible needs. Well, there's something uniquely Christian, not. <laughs> they could have brought on the secular psychologist, and frankly, they probably did. And he would have offered that. Just go and do a chore or an errand for them, something simple. Don't ask their permission, just show up and do it. Take the dogs for a walk, fold the laundry, clean the kitchen floor, pick up the dry cleaning, take the kids out for ice cream. If a pastor cannot give better advice than a TED Talk, you are looking at a cloud without water. These people are gonna need help in the days to come. They're not just gonna need our prayers, they're gonna need resources, they're gonna need people to help come around them, they're gonna need counseling. There are thousands of our brothers and sisters in the Philippines in Bible teaching churches that are praying for their own Bible. Would you please bring joy to someone who cannot afford a Bible by sending not just any Bible, but a MacArthur Study Bible with the Masters Academy International. Imagine the impact and the joy it will bring. Please send as many Bibles as you can. Wretched.org slash Bible, wretched.org slash Bible. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, 